the, to understand its uh, contemporary um, profile, we have to go back to the early post-war years. So after the demise of fascism in Italy, soon after the end of the war, Italy had its first post-fascist party, the Italian Social Movement, that uh, existed in Italy for, for over 30 years until the early, early 1990s, which was openly inspired by some of the social doctrines of, uh, of fascism. Uh, but it articulated it primarily within uh, the electoral arena. Next to this post-fascist party, you then had uh, throughout the 1970s, uh, early 1980s, uh, uh, a, a very active uh, neo-fascist terrorist uh, scene uh, that committed a number of, um, of terrorist, terrorist attacks in the country throughout what was called the uh, strategy of tension in the 1970s. Uh, contemporary manifestations of the far right in more recent years can be um, uh, categorized in two, uh, in two main blocks. On the one hand, we have uh, the follow-up of this post-fascist uh, uh, tradition that transitioned into more uh, acceptable forms, more mainstream uh, right forms since 1994. And second, we have the uh, the far right that coalesces around the, the Northern League, so around the ethno territorial, um, ethno regional uh, populist uh, frames. Both of those uh, far rights in Italy have been largely involved in the mainstream right coalitions of Silvio Berlusconi. So their, tra their, their rooting into mainstream pro politics has been allowed since the early 1990s. Uh, by the fact that they were uh, given access to government position and to mainstream coalitions by the mainstream right uh, parties uh, led by Silvio Berlusconi. Uh, the main difference, at least until recently, has been that the Northern League was rooted in the north of the country, whereas um, uh, the Movimento Sociale Italiano and uh, the other post-fascist actors have been rooted throughout uh, the country, uh, also in the south. Um, on top of those radical right parties uh, that are active, active primarily in the electoral arena, you also have today in Italy a number of smaller grassroots groups of the extreme right, which are generally neo-fascist in their ideology, such as Casa Pound and Forza Nuova, which engage primarily in the protest arena and uh, in political violence. The Northern League is today the largest party of the Italian far right. The classification of the Northern League as a far right party has been contested in the past as the, uh, the Northern League originates from uh, independentist movements in the north of the country, which certainly developed populist language and um, um, ethno-territorial, ethno-regional identities, but have for a long time uh, been demarcated and different from, distinguished from uh, the, what we generally consider as, uh, as radical right. Throughout the years, so the Northern League was born in the late 1980s, throughout the years, the, uh, the Northern League has been progressively integrated in the Italian party system through coalition with Berlusconi's parties um, and has developed into a, a strong anti-migrant and anti-European um, uh, Union uh, political party. Uh, today, the party has a, a, a double nature. So on the one hand, it remains a populist challenger that uh, mobilizes populist anti-establishment uh, narratives. But on the other side, it's also a, an institutional party that is deeply rooted within um, uh, administration at the local and regional level. Most of the uh, mm, uh, industrial regions in the north of the countries are today led by far-right uh, uh, politicians in coalition with uh, other mainstream right parties. Matteo Salvini was elected uh, uh, sec national secretary of the Lega Nord um, a few years ago at the outset of the economic crisis um, uh, in Italy. It was a time of uh, 
uh, crisis for the Northern League that had been shaken by a number of corruption scandals. And the election of Salvini marked a change in the, um, in the leadership uh, moving from the, uh, the original leaders that had founded and contributed to the breakthrough of the party to a new generation of younger leaders. Salvini completed the transition of the Liga Nord from a populist challenger to um, a full-fledged government party. It completed the transition of uh, the, the, the Northern League from a regional party to a, uh, a national party. So trying to extend support for the party also in the south uh, of the country. And finally, transition transitioned Lega Nord to a full-fledged far-right party, much more similar to, uh, to, the, to, the front, to the Front National in France than to any other, uh, to any other uh, party. Today, uh, the Northern League is the first party uh, in Italy, but it is also increasingly challenged by the other far-right party we currently have in the country, which is Fratelli d'Italia, Brothers of Italy, that is the uh, the hair of the tradition of the post-fascist parties uh, uh, like Alianza Nazionale and Movimento Sociale Italiano. The two parties have completely taken the right scene in Italy, have squeezed the center-right and basically comp compete uh, for the same votes. So while they will probably form electoral alliances in the future, there is a possibility that they will enter into conflict since they address uh, the same uh, voters. The, I would say that if we want to understand the narratives and the discourse of the contemporary far right in Italy, we can identify at least three main clusters of arguments, three main issues that they're addressing. Migrants, uh, is the first one, political correctness is the second one, and Europe is the third. Um, when it comes to migrants, of course, the far right in Italy, like the far right everywhere else in Europe, has a strongly anti-immigration agenda. In Italy, this takes the form in particular of opposition to the physical arrival of migrants on Italian territory, which is a result of the geographical position of the country and the media images of boats of people uh, reaching the country. In the past years, we have, their narrative has shifted from a general opposition to multiculturalism to a more targeted opposition to specific category of migrants, in particular black migrants from uh, Central and Sub-Saharan uh, sub Afri Africa. This is closely linked to the images of uh, arrivals of migrants uh, in Southern Italy, but it's also telling us something about the development of new forms of, uh, or perhaps old forms of um, uh, racism within, uh, within the far right. So basically today the main target is really the black man coming from, uh, from abroad. Second main target is Europe. Uh, far right parties are generally very Euroskeptic. Euro, uh, far right parties in Italy even advocate for the exit of Italy from uh, the common market and from the Schengen agreements. But one, it's important to underline that most of those proposals are uh, more rhetoric than actual uh, uh, policy proposal that they would implement. Uh, most of the electorates of the far right parties would not be really in favor of Italy exiting the Euro. So far right parties are mixing a very uh, hard Eurosceptic agenda when it comes to criticizing Angela Merkel or the European Commission with much more ambiguous positions with respect to um, exiting the Eurozone and uh, changing the common market uh, um, agreements. A final, very important dimension of the far right narrative in Italy is the opposition to political correctness. So here the idea is that um, um, much more similar to the discourse that is often promoted by uh, identitarian groups, and is the idea that the elites are dominated by post-1968 uh, values, liberal values, uh, and mainstream discourse is dominated by those anti-Italian uh, um, values and, uh, and positions. 
DMA, which include, uh, of course, uh, multiculturalism, LGBT plus uh, uh, rights, uh, and so on and so forth. Their main targets in this respect are some of the usual suspects, so left liberal elites that promote, for, for instance, uh, gender uh, equality policies, uh, and so on and so forth. The NGOs, which are accused of uh, making money out of migration and being part of international plots to replace the European populations, but also targets that we would not expect. And for instance, the Pope is often a target of the far right, being accused on the one hand of being too liberal with respect to some free forms within, within the Catholic Church, but also uh, of being too open towards migrants and towards uh, religious diversity. 